Hello again, friends, and welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips joined by Wes Mitchell here during the Gamecocks off week. South Carolina with no game tomorrow, but the Gamecocks will return to action a week from tomorrow for a game against UMass. Noon kickoff at williams Bryce Stadium a week from Saturday. So, Wes, we're at the season's midway point here, and I want to talk about the quarterback position with you, and we're going to talk about some other things as well now that we're halfway through the year. The Gamecock offense obviously struggling west. South Carolina's dead last in the country in scoring uh, 14 points a game is 128th out of 128 teams in Division One football. So the Gamecocks are looking for ways to improve offensively over the second half of the season. Obviously, four wins would get South Carolina to a bowl game, but – Realistically, I don't think a lot of folks are very optimistic that the Gamecocks are going to be able to win four of these last six. So what are the priorities for Gamecock football moving into the second half of the 2016 season? And what are the chances that Jake Bentley gets some playing time starting with this UMass game next weekend? We know he's been getting reps with the first team. Wes, talk about Bentley. Talk about the offense. Yeah, I think uh, the first and foremost, um, I I guess, priority or goal you have to look at moving forward is is for the offense to show marked improvement. You know, would that lead to South Carolina, you know, winning for the next six? You know, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find, you know, realistically looking at it, to find four wins out of the next six. Is it completely unattainable? You know, it's obviously not, but they're going to have to play a lot better, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, while continuing to play very, very well on on defense. Uh, So, you know, I think past that, you, you say show improvement. You know, that that's not just to uh, the current team, but to the fan base. Show improvement to the recruits that are watching. Show improvement, you know, to, to anybody involved with the program and build some momentum going into the off season, going into next season. You know, I, I think as far as Jake Bentley goes, you can sort of tie everything I just said into the answer to that question. You know, the chances of Jake Bentley playing have gone up a ton because of the fact that the quarterback play has not been good enough. Now, that's not to say the quarterback play has been the only problem. That's not to say that a, that good quarterback play would have fixed the other problems because it obviously wouldn't, but quarterback play has got to be better. And when you have a guy like Jake Bentley sitting over there on the bench, you have I think it's you, you just have to try everything. And, and Bentley's a talented kid. Um, he's another option you have. Maybe some of these other positions that – you're not getting great play out of. Maybe you don't have any other options. At this position, you do. You know, I, I think right now, as long as the next week of practices go goes well, um, you know, you're you're going to see Jake Bentley on on the field. You know, they they haven't made a a final decision, but the door, I would say, the door is wide open. You know, he's going to get every opportunity in practice, and then they'll they'll go from there. But you know, I, I think uh, my my feeling is that. If you're going to give Bentley a shot, this is certainly the week to do it because you've had an entire bye week to get him mentally ready for that. You can use all this next week to let him get a bunch of first-team reps, and then you play a UMass team at home that, you know, no offense to them, they've, I mean, they've hung in with some really good teams uh, this year, but obviously that's not the same as facing a Georgia defense or facing a Texas A&M defense for your first start. So this, to me, just makes a lot of sense. I'm kind of of the opinion. I don't really know what South Carolina has to lose by playing Jake Bentley. All right, that, that's an interesting thought, Wes. You know, what, what do you say to the folks who might say, well, Bentley's better off redshirting this year because that way you stagger McIlwain and Bentley by a year. And, you know, looking at the numbers for the two quarterbacks that the Gamecocks have played this year, Wes, the numbers are not bad. McIlwain has completed 52% of his passes. The Gamecock QBs have only got two touchdown passes all season. McIlwain's got both of them. Orth has not thrown a touchdown pass this year, but he's completing 63% of his passes, and his yardage total is pretty good. So we know that the Gamecocks have not generated enough points in the passing game. And maybe the most telling statistic of the first half of the season is the fact that Brian Edwards and Debo Samuel have a combined zero touchdown receptions this year through six games. Edwards and Samuel, who we talked about all summer as being Key players for the Gamecocks here in 2016, they've got zero TDs. Crosby caught one TD. A.J. Turner has got the other one. So the Gamecocks have not been able to get the ball to these outside uh, talents, these players, these playmakers, Brian Edwards 
and Debo Samuel that we knew they would need to produce to have a successful year here in 2016. So quarterback play needs to improve, Wes. Uh, nobody's saying that Perry Orth and Brandon McIlwain should be forgotten about. You know, I think they still have a role on the football team, but if you're looking for hope, if you're looking for something to hang your hat on, if you're a Gamecock fan for the second half of the season, a lot of folks feel like that could be Jake Bentley. Yeah, and I think to the people that say, you know, you're better off redshirting him, uh, you know, I don't really buy the idea of staggering them because at some point one of those two guys is going to sort of beat out the other. Uh, you know, they're, they're still in a battle right now. Next year they'll be in a battle. But at some point it's going to be, I, I think, a clear winner to the bentley McElwain, uh sort of QB battle with them coming in in the same class. So, you know, I, I think at this point far more important than staggering them is to to put yourself in a good position moving forward offensively. You know, I would argue that uh, just personnel-wise, moving forward, South Carolina's got a chance as we finish this year, moving into next year, to to have some pretty good offensive personnel. I think the emergence of Rico Daddle, you know, you look to next year, he'll have a bunch of games under his belt, then will be a sophomore. You know, A.J. Turner will have a full season under his belt. You get uh, Tyson Williams into the mix, who we've heard nothing but great things about. You know, get Debo, Brian Edwards a full season. Uh, get Randrikas Davis back healthy. Bring in some of the recruits like Ortre Smith, who have a chance to, you know, play early. Offensive personnel, if you look and project it out, is going to be in a situation where they've got a chance to be pretty good. Uh, if you go ahead and figure out the quarterback situation now, you know, it's only going to be better for next year. So, yeah, in an ideal world, maybe South Carolina could have got by with, with McIlwain and Orth uh, this season and, and just let Bentley sort of learn at his own pace. But at this point, when you're averaging literally two touchdowns a game uh, and nothing more, you, you've, got, you've got to do something to mix things up and, and, try, to, and try to give yourself a spark. And I, I think... You know, if this was a kid that wasn't very highly touted or wasn't highly thought of, you would say, well, they're just grasping at straws. But when you look at Bentley's talent, when you look at, you know, I, I mean, and I, I've been very careful. I'm trying not to to create um, unreasonable hype for the guy. But, you know, I mean, I watched him in the open practice when he was working with the third team at times. Um at times, he's picking apart the first team defense in practice. So, you know, the the, the talent, the ability for Bentley is, is there. You're South Carolina. You didn't want to just throw him to the Wolves and, and put him out there too early. I think looking back, you know, Mac- McElwain wasn't ready, clearly. He was sort of forced into action too early. You don't want to do that to both your quarterbacks. But at this point, if you think Bentley could potentially spark the offense, then – I don't I don't really think you have a choice. You know, you you can there there's a lot it's been a big discussion on our message board clearly about is it the right decision. We've got a lot of different arguments for one way or the other, but at the end of the day, if if you have another potential option that could fix your offense, um not that it will, but just that it could, don't you owe it to yourself as a coach, owe it to your assistants, owe it to your fan base? And ultimately owe it to the other players to be able to say you've tried everything. I mean, if you have that option sitting there, I think you have to try it. And I, and you know what? I even thought about this. Go all the way back to the Florida tenure. I don't know what Muschamp's thoughts are looking back, you know, with hindsight. But, you know, that Florida offense was a much different offense the year after Muschamp left because of one Will Greer, who they did not pull the red shirt off of in Muschamp's final year. You know, maybe Muschamp's thinking to himself, even though that kid maybe wasn't quite ready, if we'd have pulled the the, the Will Greer red shirt halfway through that season, uh, may, maybe it's a different story because, you know, that Florida offense was just a different offense when they had Will Greer uh, in the mix. All right, Wes, I'm looking at some of the first-half statistics for the Gamecocks. South Carolina's got 29 
first downs rushing. Gamecock opponents have got 69 first downs rushing. South Carolina averaging three yards per carry. Gamecock opponents averaging 5.2 yards per rush. You know, we could go on and on about the Gamecocks offensive struggles this year. Defensively, the Gamecocks have been better than I think a lot of people would have thought. So we can touch on the defense a little bit, Wes. And, and in summing up, the Gamecocks' offensive struggles. We talked about this before we started today's show. The Gamecocks have scored nine total touchdowns this year. Alabama, the number one ranked team in the country, has scored nine non-offensive touchdowns this year. And I know Alabama is the number one ranked team in the nation. They might be the best team in the country. But, Wes, that, that gives you an idea of the, the type of problems the Gamecocks have had on offense. Just contemplate that for a moment. Nine offensive total touchdowns for the Gamecocks in six games. And Alabama, the number one ranked team in the country, has got nine non-offensive TDs. They've scored nine TDs with their defense and with their special teams. So that kind of gives you an idea of where the Gamecocks are right now. Yeah, I think you, um, you know, we probably need to have a disclaimer for anybody that just puked on their smartphone device at home uh, that we're not uh, liable for that damage. Because uh, I, I think that's probably a stomach uh, upsetting, uh, I guess, stat for a lot of Gamecock fans out there, but. Uh, you know, at, at this point, it, it is what it is. You know, they've they've got to do anything they can to try to try to fix things, but uh, it, it's been bad. It's obviously been really bad, and it, it's easy to see why it's been bad. You know, w- when you look at the just the lack of proven playmakers, the lack of experience. Um, you know, I, I think we all knew there were going to be some growing pains, but it has been a bit of a surprise to me that it's been as bad as it has been. Gamecock Central Radio here, Emerson Phillips with Wes Mitchell. Mid-season discussion for Gamecock football, South Carolina 2-4 and four with six games remaining. And Wes, you know, I want to talk more about Bentley a little bit here. If Bentley can show some ability, if he gets into the UMass game, you know, maybe the Gamecock season takes on a different feel and maybe South Carolina can find a way to piece together some wins and even get to a bowl game here. We'll get to more on that in a moment. We invite you to download the Gamecock Central Radio app or on, on the App Store and on Google Play to subscribe to the podcast. Search for Gamecock Central Radio on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services, or visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. Wes, taking a look back in Gamecock football history, you know, I think about Steve Tannehill's first year, his freshman year, and Tannehill – uh, came in and won five games over the remainder of the season and really turned the season around. And I don't know that Jake Bentley will be in a position to have that drastic an effect, but I wonder if that's possible. And like you said uh, earlier in the show today, you know, what have the Gamecocks got to lose at this point? Yeah, exactly. I, I think that, you know, I, again, I, I don't want to put those crazy expectations on the kid because um, he, here's what I think you can expect from Jake Bentley. Um, you know, you may have a little bit of that, uh, Steve Tannehill, um, sort of confidence. Like, I I think you're going to see a kid that's not going to be, he's not going to be scared about making a mistake. He, you know, he's going to put the ball in some windows where fans say, you know, that, that is a NFL type throw. Um, you know, and I, and hopefully fans could just handle the fact that you're also going to have, some plays where you say, what in the heck was that? Um, because he, he is a freshman and he's going to, you know, the game moves so fast. And, you know, he, he's going to be a kid, I think, that, that drops back and fires the football and gets it out. Um, so sometimes that leads to bad plays. Sometimes that leads to interceptions. I think that we will see a, uh, based on what I've seen from Jake Bentley and I've I've watched him, at various times ever since he was at camp at South Carolina, the Steve Spurrier 707 camp uh, when he was in high school, maybe uh, as a freshman, I think. This is a kid that's going to let the football loose. So you're probably going to see a more explosive offense. You're also probably going to see, you know, a a few more turnovers, uh, a more turnover, a higher turnover percentage, I think, um, just because of his style of play until he gets more and more comfortable with the speed of the game. Uh, fans are just going to have to accept that. But I will also say this, the the just natural ability to throw the football, uh, when this kid is on, he is about as good as any freshman quarterback I've ever seen at the University of South Carolina. Um, you know, the just natural 
ability to pass the football and put it where he wants it is uh, is pretty much off the charts. So, you know, when he can, if he can get all the mental stuff down, the just physical ability to be an accurate quarterback yeah. is uh, is is off the charts for Jake Bentley. I think that's what people are going to see. Yeah, he's a tall kid, you know, and he's got the physical tools. We know he's got the arm strength, high football IQ, son of a coach. His father, Bobby, is the Gamecocks running backs coach. Built Burns High School into a powerhouse here in South Carolina before moving on to college football. Worked at PC, worked at Auburn, and now Bobby is on the South Carolina staff, and Jake is with him here with the Gamecock football program. Yeah, and, and uh, to, to add something else there, Emerson, I think the other thing I've noticed about Jake is while he's learning – the uh, intricacies of this offense, um, I would put that in a different category than necessarily the intricacies of the quarterback position. He's actually, for a freshman, he's very, very far along. He's very advanced as far as just understanding of that position. You know, this is a kid, a lot a lot of the way high school schemes work these days, um, a lot of quarterbacks come in generally – you know, nowadays a lot of high schools. Let's be honest. You, I mean, you see more high school football uh, than about anybody. Emerson, you know how the quarterbacks are. People put their best athlete at quarterback, and if uh, if a guy is open, the quarterback can see him and deliver the football. A lot of times, you get to college, and it's more about anticipating where that guy is going to be open. And sometimes you have to throw the ball before the guy is open. Um, Something I noticed about Bentley is just a great feel for the position um, as far as when to throw a touch pass, when to throw a, a, a bullet pass, um, and even an ability when there's a defender sort of in the area to throw the ball away from the defender so that his receiver can use his body to sort of uh, to where the defender has to come through him to get to the football where either it's an incompletion or the receiver makes the catch. Um, his understanding of how to do those things uh, is very, very advanced for a freshman. So while his while his exact knowledge of all the reads and all the little things that go into this offense may he may still be learning, he's got a great just quarterback knowledge to uh, to foundation, I guess you'd probably say to to build all that off of. So um, you know, and again, I'm just I'm I'm not trying to just build the kid up to crazy expectations, but um, the the ability to the upside to be really really good is there all right Wes another interesting part of Jake Bentley I, I don't know that a lot of people realize that he's actually older than Brandon McElwain he should be a senior in high school this year but we know that he accumulated enough credits to graduate high school at the end of his junior year so that's what he did he basically bypassed his senior year of high school so that he can roll at the University of South Carolina but he's actually older than Brandon McElwain who's also a true freshman Right, yeah, he, he is older. He uh, he um, did the, I guess, high school redshirt. You, you'd say, for lack of a better way to say it, um, earlier in his uh, in his lifetime. So, you know, he he's he's older than than him, and he you know he's a competitor. He's a kid that, like I said, is not going to lack confidence. So, I um, I for one am, am just intrigued to see what he's going to do, and you know, if he plays, I think he will. I've, I've got a good feel he will. I I I thought. I thought he was going to get a, maybe a snap or two in the Vanderbilt game, to be honest, but uh, that that obviously didn't happen. So, um, you know, we'll see. And I, I think, shoot, man, I, I think that the fans, this UMass game, let's be honest, not many people were going to be excited about going to check out South Carolina UMass at uh, at noon uh, next week. The fact they're going to get to see Jake Bentley, uh, or possibly see Jake Bentley, I guess yeah. I should say, to be accurate. Yeah. Um, if that comes to fruition, I think the fans are. Uh, I think there's a few more fans in the stands come Saturday uh, afternoon. I agree. I think. I think you're right. All signs point to a very distinct possibility that Bentley gets into the game against UMass next Saturday noon kickoff for the Gamecocks and UMass, and that will leave five games on the South Carolina schedule. October 29th, home against Tennessee. November the fifth, home against Missouri. November 12th at Florida, November 19th home against Western Carolina, and November the 26th at Clemson to wrap up the regular season. Wes, a little bit of optimism moving into the second half of the season. I know it's been a tough year for Gamecock football, but if Bentley can come in and give the Gamecocks a spark on offense, I think that would be the cause of a lot of optimism, not only for the second half of this season, but particularly looking ahead to the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. It should be fun. Um, You know, he's going to get a chance to get out there with – 
with some of these other young receivers, young players. Uh, Rico Daddle, I think, is a guy to be excited about and, and go from there. And, you know, I, we, I think we probably haven't mentioned uh, Brandon McElwain enough. I think, uh, obviously, too, we have to say it's too early to give up on Brandon McElwain as well. And I, I think if I'm the staff, if Bentley's the guy, I maybe use this as an opportunity to get uh, McElwain maybe more focused on a package of plays and get him very, very comfortable with these package of plays as sort of a change of pace uh, versus having the entire offense thrown his way where, to me, it's pretty clear that McElwain, uh, the game has not slowed down for him uh, because it's not it just hasn't been in the, the passing game. He's made uh, mental mistakes in the running game as well as far as the zone read, when to keep it, when to hand it off. So, you know, I, I think looking at, at McElwain there, you want to do everything you can to get him to where he's he's very comfortable, you know, in what he's doing. So I, I think if someone else is sort of the QB that has the entire offense, you maybe develop just a package of plays and, and let McElwain focus on those. And then you maybe put him in there as a change of pace because he, I think he's quicker than we've been able to see. But it's one of those things where you rarely play fast if you're if you're thinking yeah. while you're trying to play. So I, I think that might be something where you could get a little bit more out of McElwain's natural ability if you can find a way to get him more comfortable. Right. Nobody's given up on Brandon McElwain by any stretch, and he's still learning, Wes. You know, he's only started the three games, and, and he's got a lot of football left in front of him, so we're certainly not giving up on Brandon McElwain. Just right now, the Gamecocks are looking for some kind of a spark. We don't know if Jake Bentley could provide it, but if he can – you know, we feel like that might be a move worth making for the Gamecocks. But McElwain's going to be around for a long time, and certainly he's got a bright future at South Carolina. So, Wes, we appreciate the chat today. Midseason discussion of Gamecock football. Noon kick for South Carolina and UMass next Saturday. Thanks very much. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon, Emerson. All right. He's Wes Mitchell, and I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> 